Hey guys, Youngblood with you for the 75th episode of The Inbox, starting off with a question from Dylan Clark saying, Hey STL Youngblood, always nice work, I appreciate that. Uh, what are your thoughts on multi-level voice channels that should allow command structures and orgs to come effectively without having 20 guys on the same voice comms? Yeah, I think that's going to be a challenge that CIG is going to have to face. Um, it's one of the main things that I think is going to have to happen to make sure that people are utilizing Spectrum or in-game communication as opposed to something that's third-party. Um, you know, for uh, PXP, for example, we utilize Mumble, um, and what it does, and one of the main reasons we do this is because of the command chain of uh, communication. Um, we're able to set shortcuts to yell and shout to certain members of leadership. So, you know, we've got it built so we could say, okay, here's going to be the core fleet guys, and they're going to be, and here's your ship. So maybe like you've got communication within your ship, and then you, the pilot of the ship or the captain of the ship has communication with the other p captains. And then beyond that, maybe then all of a sudden the captains have connection to whoever's leading the operation. And then all the leaders may have an additional chat for some collaboration and making the right decisions. So that sort of multi level channel is going to be really, really important. And I think that's just one part of it. You know, the game has to have that actually supported in order for people to utilize that. Um, and it has to be done in an effective way, um, you know, that's going to make people want to use that. And maybe it ties things like player position to it so you have an idea of who's talking and where they are. Um, like something that an external option like a mumble or a team speaker or a Discord does not have. So that's something that really needs to come. Past that, I think it's going to come down to leaders really being forced to manage the conversations that are taking place and finding that balance of when people are having a good time and the risk is low or when risk is high, being able to coordinate guys actually shutting their mouth so you can really focus on um, you know, playing the game and focus on the threats that are at hand and dealing with those situations when it's there. So it's going to be a balance of not only the leadership structure, but more so the, uh, the options that are available in voice chat. And I think that's something they really need to work through. Uh, Ruben Silva says, hey, hello there. I have questions. Will I be able to use any ship as an exploration ship, for example, a Redeemer? Well, technically, you could explore in any ship, um, and you're going to be able to customize ships in a lot of different ways. But you want to keep in mind, there's some things that make for effective ships in certain types of situations. So could you technically go out and do some exploration in, a, in an M50? Sure, but it's not going to be a good option. You know, an explorer, for example, needs to have long range, um, or should have long range, um, should have upgraded scanners, and should probably have a little bit of cargo space to help facilitate um, taking anything back that you find that would be valuable or worthwhile on your trip. Um, so in regards to the Redeemer, I think it hits two of those. I think it's going to be relatively long range. It's not going to be like super long range because when, when we start talking about dropships, um, I think the uh, Vanguard Hoplite is probably taking over that. Um, so I think it's probably going to be kind of a mid to long range type of ship. Um, and it's got some cargo space in bo on board depending on how you actually utilize the space. Um, it does not have upgraded scanners at this point. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean you can't do that. You know, it's probably got a combat suite as a gunboat um, that's focused on tracking targets. You could swap that out for something that's more designed to be, um, you know, identifying anomalies or resources or whatever. Um, but it's not necessarily purpose built for that. So you're going to have to do some customizing on your own. And like, you could swap out more powerful engines for, you know, more efficient engines. And that would all of a sudden open you up to longer range. So you're going to be able to customize a lot of these ships into different roles. But keep in mind, a ship that's upgraded to something outside of its main purpose is never going to be as good as something that is purpose built in that space. Um, a Derek 79 says, will ship replacement be magical? Now, I know from an old video that missile factory, we will need metals, explosives, electronics, etc. to make missiles. Will there actually be ship manufacturing plants out there where the replacement ships are actually made? Um, will there be massive numbers of replacement ships being flown all over the planets that deal in ships? Or will replacement ships basically appear magically? Um, some of that we don't know yet. Like We don't know how you're actually going to get the ship. But we do know that planets have manufacturing um, locations. You know, We've heard about an Aegis plant. We've heard about a consolidated outlands plant in the lore. Um, so there are going to be locations where your ship is actually going to be made, and that's going to end up having an impact on when you get your ship back. The more rare a ship, the harder it's going to be for you to get, the longer it's going to take. Um, if there is a shortage of materials in a certain system, that may end up making it longer for you to get your ship back. You know, you may end up having to pay a premium in order to get it back faster. So yeah, I mean, there is going to be pieces that are more advanced than just magically showing up. You know, it's going to not be immediate unless you pay for it to be immediate, and even then it might just be expedited. Um, but, you know, as far as how it gets from the plant to you, I don't know. Um, I don't think somebody's going to have to fly it to you or you're going to have to go get it, um, but we'll end up just having to see. Uh, RVDM says, how would the uh, upgrade kits for the Van uh, Vanguard work? The description says swap out mounts on existing Vanguard Sentinel kit, but does this also change the interior of the ship or only the weapons mounts? 
So the Vanguard's an interesting ship um, because it's got a couple different things that are going to be impacted by the Battlefield upgrade kits. Um, you know, basically what you're changing out is everything but the hull. And when I talk about the hull, I'm talking about the, uh, pilot, the cockpit and the pilot's area and the spot right behind it. Um, and then in the very back of the ship between the airlock and the... Um, you know, the ramp that you enter the ship with. So, um, but everything between the airlock swaps out, almost like a, a cube that just comes out and you put a new one in there. Um, and then additionally, all the hard points end up changing as well. So when we start talking about the Sentinel kit, um, in the Warden, you're getting rid of like the living quarters and in the inside, you're getting rid of the turret on top, and that's going to be swapped out to a point to where you end up having um, the, uh, in the Sentinel, you're going to have the um, databases and the uh, servers on the inside and the control modules for that, and the turret all of a sudden becomes a um, you know, like a electronic warfare station. Uh, you know, if you do that on the Harbinger, you're swapping that out. You're putting the torpedo launchers and uh, management system on the interior cube. And on the top, you're putting our uh, rocket turret. Um, and those are the types of things that are going to be swapped out. So basically, the whole of the ship and the paint job stays the same. Um, the components in the center of the ship is what changes. Uh, Shadows A to B says, STL, how aggressive do you think the universe is going to be in terms of how hostile most common space will be uh, to get through for people on a peaceful mission, such as cargo running, exploration, salvage, etc.? Thank you much. I'm going to change drastically depending on where you are, um, and probably partially based on your reputation as well. You know, if you're just exploring Terra or some relatively safe area, you're not going to be harassed as much. You know, I think if you're exploring, you know, Vanguard or something <laughs> that's a little bit more deadly like Terra or Magna or not Terra, like Magnus or, you know, some of the known pirate locations, then you're probably going to have a harder time. So the reputation of yourself, um, you know, if you're known to be a deadly player, you know, if you've got a lot of kills on your record, people may leave you alone. Um, the type of ship that you're in is going to have an impact. You know, if you're hauling cargo in a freelancer, you're probably less likely to be harassed than if you're hauling cargo in a whole A. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of factors in there. If you're sticking to relatively safe space, I think your risk is going to be relatively low. Um, you know, I think if all of a sudden you're talking about getting into more dangerous areas, there's going to be a lot of factors that come into play. And you may end up just having no issues at all on a run, but sometimes you may be stopped three or four times depending on what's happening. So um, the, the system security is going to play a big part of it. Um, your overall reputation is going to play a part of it. Your ship is going to play a lot of it. Um, and then I would say even, uh, you know, probably more importantly is if you have any escorts or not. So if you're in a dangerous area and you're doing cargo by yourself, you're probably at risk. If you're doing a cargo mission with two sabers as an escort, you're probably a lot likelier to be okay. So um, there's too many factors to just answer that question straight up. Um, but I think if you take what I just said and kind of apply different scenarios, you'll get a better idea of how dangerous it's actually going to be. Uh, Sean Whatstone says, question, in last week's ATV, we saw the Vanguard and the Javelin. So what all ships can carry my Vanguard? Um, right now, I think it is just the Javelin. I think it's actually too big to fit in the Idris. It definitely doesn't fit in the Polaris. Um, it may, may fit in the um, in the Endeavor Hope uh, section. You know, the, the new Cutlass um, is probably questionable, though it is designed to actually carry the Cutlass Red. So I would assume that it has to fit in there. Um, so I think it's really just going to be the one or two of those ships. Um, you know, I think the Bangle would probably carry it, but the chances of you getting a Bangle are going to be pretty low. Um, but you got to remember, the purpose of the Vanguard is to be long range. It's not necessarily supposed to be a carrier based ship. So it's designed to let you go long distance without relying on a carrier. So um, it's not going to be forced into a lot of hangars to be able to accomplish what you want. And because of that, it's not necessarily going to fit in many of those either. Uh, Ryan 1632, I really do wonder how much range these exploration ships will have and how far into the unexplored space they can go without returning out of, or running out of fuel, or will they just be able to refuel themselves, or do they need fleet to support? Um, it's probably going to be a couple different things there. Um, you know, one thing is they're, they're reworking range and quantum drive and the amount of fuel that it uses and all of those different factors. Um, and we haven't really gotten any exploration in game yet and because we don't have any exploration in game yet. We don't really know. Um, that being said, it, they should be able to have some um, fuel scooping ability on most of those ships. Now, it's not going to be able to keep you going indefinitely, but it should help to at least extend your range. Um, and keep in mind, you know, you're probably going to be going from, uh, you know, system to system to system. None of the systems that we're going to be in are totally um, unoccupied. So there's probably going to be stations. So, you know, if you need to go exploring five or six stations or systems over, you could probably stop a couple times and refuel. Um, and then you just need to manage your fuel while you're in the system at the outer edges when you're doing your exploration to keep an eye out on um, how, how far you need to go. Or I guess when you hit that bingo mark where you need to head back, otherwise you're going to be stranded. And then all of a sudden you're relying on a support. Now, if you're in a ship like the Carrick, for example, and doing some long range exploration and you don't want to have to make those stops, you know, bringing something like a Starfarer 
along could have some benefit to let you keep going and going and going. So you're not going to need a fleet to support you, but a fleet to support you could certainly be a benefit. And our last question today is from Sketchy. It's a patron question. Can you talk a bit about ship ownership in the final PU and how that will work? Account or character bound, loaning, renting, selling, using with NPCs, etc.? Um, sure. So as far as the ship ownership is concerned, it is tied to you. It is tied to your account. Um, you know, so as far as if we're talking about account or character bound, it is bound to your account, to my knowledge. Now, if you want another in like if you've got you know, two accounts and you're playing, or two characters on one account, you're technically playing both of them. I think either one of them is going to be able to utilize that ship. And what happens to you in that instance is going to be more based on your um, your reputation of that character. Um, we don't know how much of the reputation system is going to ble bleed between two characters. So um, that's kind of a gray area. As far as loaning and renting and selling is concerned, selling is the easy one. We know you can sell your ship. You can trade it in at a dealership to get another ship. Um, you can upgrade to it. We know that's going to be a factor. So I wouldn't count on getting full purchase price but if you've made upgrades to it you're probably going to get more than you uh um than you would on a base ship um as far as loaning you should be able to do that that's going to be granted based on a permission system so you could technically look at your uh, manifest of ships and then say i'm willing to let somebody have permissions to utilize this ship and these stations um so that should be a thing and i think loaning is going to be um, or i'm sorry renting is probably going to be based on that it just adds in the additional layer of a uh, credit transfer which we think is going to be in game so it's all of a sudden going to be you want to use this ship give me you know thirty thousand uec here you go here's my ship have fun bring it back by this day and then maybe if they don't bring it back by that day then all of a sudden you can you might have the ability to lock them out or something like that remotely but chances are if you needed it back and somebody ran away with it you'd be uh, filling out a bounty on them and then as far as NPCs go, um, that, that one's pretty straightforward. You know, you're going to go to a job board. You can hire people to get on your ship. You can control them via the uh, uh, NPC control mechanisms that they're going to have in place. Some NPCs are going to be better at different stations and everything along those lines. So um, I think there's a lot there. If you want to kind of hit me up in a, with a part B of this with specifics you want me to talk about in there, I'm happy to do it. But, um, you know, the ability to control um, the NPCs is going to be directly tied to what they're good at doing and what you're paying them to do and how you're assigning them within your ship. So that's this episode of the Inbox. If you guys have questions, get them in. Otherwise, stay tuned for more and have a great day. Take care.